take a look at this stack bar plot. You can find a plot like this anywhere. There is a place for stack bar charts, but I think most of the time you can do better. Here it is hard to compare car classes because most of the colored bars do not share a common baseline. Instead, split the bar charts and create a small window for each class. This way you have a nice baseline for comparisons for each class. And then you can still add a bar chart for the total amount. Hence you have the same amount of information but comparisons are much easier. To create this chart I first load the tidyverse. Then I take the mpg dataset from ggplot and filter it so that it only includes the data that I want to use. In this case that means only data from the year 2008. And I'll get rid of the small classes 2-seater and minivan. Next I adjust my dataset a little bit to combine small classes like compact and subcompact into one and I combine pickup and SUV into one class as well. Also our classes will be relabeled so that they start with a capital letter which I think makes for nicer labels later on. And we'll do the same thing with the manufacturers. Finally we transform the manufacturers into a sorted factor variable so that our bars are sorted later on which is a must have for most bar charts. Now we can take our dataset, pass it to ggplot, map the manufacturer labels to the y-axis and the class labels to the fill aesthetic of the bars. Of course, we'll also need a GM bar layer to create the bars. We have our first bar chart and I really don't like this design. Let's change the colors by first getting colors from the colorblind safe Okabe Ito color palette. Then we add a theme minimal layer to increase the font size and set it to a better font family. Finally we map the fill colors to 3 out of the 4 colors we have just saved. Nice, this looks already much better. To split the bars we just have to add a facet wrap call where we use class as the faceting variable. And we can give each of those windows a nice baseline by adding a vertical line with GMV line. Next we get rid of superfluous axis labels with the labs function. And we can remove more superfluous stuff by using the theme function to remove a lot of grid lines and the legend because we don't need it anymore as the class labels are already included in the facets. Congrats, we have finished the first part of our split plot, so let's save this into a variable. To create the bar chart for the total amount of manufacturers, we just have to copy and paste the code from before and set the fill aesthetic to the last color from our colors vector. Of course, we don't want to split this plot anymore, so we can get rid of class inside facet wrap. But don't get rid of facet wrap just yet we can still use it to create a nice label for this bar chart. We just map what is faceted to a string and it will appear in the facet title of this new plot. In this chart we don't need the manufacturer labels anymore so let's get rid of them. Once again we save our finished chart into a new variable. Finally we can combine our two plots with the patchwork package. It lets us combine plots by adding them and with the plot annotation function we can add a title for the combined plot and maybe theme it a little bit differently. Notice that the split plot and the total plot get exactly the same width. This doesn't make sense because in each window of the split plot you have a scale from 0 to 15 and it's the same in the total plot. Which means that the amount 15 gets a lot more space in the total plot than in the split plot. This distorts your image so you have to make sure that each unit in your plot gets the same amount of space. Here this just means adding a plot layout call and using more or less 3 times the width for the split plot compared to the total plot. This isn't an exact science because the split plot also includes the labels which is why I've made it a little bit bigger than just triple width. Because this last thing is a little bit tricky, let us have a look at another example. Here I'm looking at the number of flights departing from New York City in 2013. And for each airport I have created a bar chart using abbreviations of the airlines. Notice that for each airport the scale goes from 0 to 40,000. And in our totals bar chart it goes from 0 to 60,000. Since we have 3 airports I've set the widths and plot layout to 3.1 for the split chart. That's the same as before, but instead of using Using a width of 1 like last time for the totals chart, I have calculated the ratio of 60,000 and 40,000. So this is one way to split your stack bar charts to make them easier for comparisons. And let me know if you like this video by hitting the like button and for more tips on creating bar charts, check out one of these two videos.